Hey everyone, today I'll be sharing how we maintain this giant Stewardia bonsai through spring. So let's get started. This footage was recorded on May 10th, 2022 after repotting the tree in March. Due to its age, we only do this work for this tree once per year, as it won't push any more growth after the work is done. Later in the video, I'll demonstrate how I deal with younger material. Try not to mind my ridiculous outfit as I gotta protect my precious ginger skin from the harsh pressure of the sun. The bulk of this work is quite simple and involves thinning out what we call the susoba or budless leaves along with the flower buds. After that, cutting the shoots back to the inner two most buds of the shoot and cutting select leaves in half. The goal of this work is to balance the tree by suppressing the strongest growth and reduce the foliage mass which creates openings within the canopy to allow light into the interior and helps the tree breathe by allowing air to flow between the leaves. By cutting the shoots we should also be sending energy back towards the interior of the tree which should promote some back budding. Additionally, it's good to understand that as with many species, developing flowers and fruit as bonsai is a stressful process for the tree which can often lead to imbalances. This isn't at all a problem for a tree in the ground, however with the limited resources in the pot, the tree will begin to prioritize developing seeds. Those branches will thicken unevenly and the areas of the tree without flowers could get really weak and die off. Fujikawa-san always repeats that it's critical for light to be able to pass through the canopy of deciduous trees and says that it's something that's neglected by many hobbyists who want to hastily develop the silhouette of their bonsai. But if the interior leaves receive low or inconsistent light, the tree will prioritize resources somewhere else and shed those leaves and thus those buds. So let's take a closer look at exactly how we prune this at this time and afterwards I'll explain the importance of maintaining those interior buds. Here I have a branch which was removed from an overcrowded area. Let's go over this step by step. First thing you see here is this innermost bud which is yet to fully develop. I won't touch this as it may later turn into a branch of its own. Following that are the leaves with flower buds. There are also often leaves with no buds in place of these known as susoba. Which roughly translates to cuff leaf but is better known as the budless leaf. Moving out from there, you need to identify which is the first leaf with a bud. It's difficult to see on video, so I'll zoom in a bit, and you can just barely see the bud between the stem of the shoot and the base of the leaf. We want to keep at least two of these, but three is also okay if you want the branch to grow in a certain direction. But firstly, cut the flower buds out. Then we're going to count out two leaves, confirming they have buds, and cutting off the remainder of the shoot, regardless of how much growth has accumulated. Now all that remains are these two leaves, and to thin this out further without compromising the future branch structure, we're going to cut the leaves by pinching it along the spine and pointing the scissors towards the stem to roughly maintain the shape of the leaf. The idea here is to end up with all of the leaves on the tree being about the same size and not touching the leaves in the weaker areas. So there you have it. This is what the tips of your branches should look like by doing it in this way. Here's what it's going to start to look like as it's performed on the tree. You can see just how much space cutting those parts out can free up among this dense canopy. So why do we cut to these two leaves? If we cut to one, the tree will just keep elongating a single branch. However, with two, we'll create a bifurcation of the branch, which is important for creating ramification. It's all well and good to show you an example of an ideal branch, but there are many arrangements you'll encounter as you go through the tree. For example, this following branch doesn't have an extended shoot beyond what we want to cut to at this time. However, the flower buds are forming and those need to be removed. So I'll go in and cut all of these out now. Take your time and be as gentle as you can as you move the leaves out of the way as you want to prevent any unwanted tearing or cuts to the leaves and branches. On a tree this dense, it's almost inconsequential to rip a leaf or two off. However, you want to be as mindful as you can be so that you can improve the ramification of your tree as much as possible. After the flower buds are cut, I'm going to go in and only cut the largest of the leaves here. Since these are yet to fully extend, it's good to keep an eye on these over the summer, just in case any new shoots need to be cut. 
However, as I mentioned earlier, because of this tree is so old, it's not so vigorous and these branches didn't push any more growth than this. The small white flowers produced by Stewardia are really pleasant, so it's a shame that we need to remove them. If you're someone who enjoys fruiting flowering species, you could instead just grow Stewardia for its flowers if you so desired. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I think it's good to hammer in. For deciduous bonsai in particular, light gracing those bare branches and the inner branches with leaves encourages bud growth. Without new interior buds, you'll have nothing to cut back to and the tree will quickly lose its shape. Once that happens, it's difficult to tame back to a desirable profile without large cuts which will cause an obvious loss in natural taper along the branches. Of course grafting is also possible, but that's an explanation for another time. This pruning is actually applicable to many alternating bud species with only slight variations depending on the species or the age of the tree. Prunus mume, for example, have the susoba where this thwardia has flower buds and we cut them off in the same fashion and similarly cut the shoots to two or three buds. Also, real quickly, on younger thwardia, you can actually just pinch the new shoots as they come out throughout spring and summer to suppress the growth. And you can do this to any new shoot as long as it's grown beyond two or three leaves with buds on them. On this small forest made from cuttings, which is only maybe about seven or eight years old, I was pinching new shoots throughout the entire growing season. I even had to partially defoliate it twice throughout the summer. So younger stewardia are very vigorous, and they may require a lot of effort to suppress the growth to develop fine branching, especially on smaller material such as this. Back to the other tree now that it's all done. Let's take a close look up into the canopy and see if you can tell the difference between the before and after in regards to how much light is passing between the leaves. One final look, and as I play this out, we'll show the tree in its winter silhouette. Thanks again for tuning in. As always, if you learned something, give it a like and a share. If you have any questions or suggestions, throw them in the comments down below. Lastly, if you find my videos valuable to your learning, or even just interesting enough to warrant it, please feel free to leave a donation at the link in the description. Anything that goes towards that, I'll put back into these videos to make even better content for everyone. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.